this. What can I do to rectify this offense? Of course, Mukunda understood everything because he saw the expression on Gadadhar's face when he entered the room. So Mukunda whispered back, it's only one way. You can nullify the offense. Ask him if he'll accept you as his disciple. And that's what happened. The daughter of Pandit approached him later and said, please accept me as your disciple. You are my guru. So we don't know who is the topmost Vaishnava. <clears throat> For example, if we were in Naimasharanya, before this yajna began, if we had seen Sukadeva Goswami standing there, naked, and we had seen Narada Muni there, we would have thought, okay, Narada Muni, great devotee, who is this Baba? He's naked Baba, he's Naga Baba. We wouldn't have known that he was considered the top of Vaishnava. We wouldn't have known that. So we cannot judge by external considerations. We cannot judge anybody. Because by judging another person, that is the first and foremost offense. Number one. Number one offense. To find fault, in Sanskrit it's called sadhu ninda. To find fault, to criticize those devotees who have dedicated their lives to propagating the holy name of the Lord. And who are those devotees that have dedicated their lives to propagating the holy name of the Lord? Well, everybody in this room, everybody in this country, every Vaishnava in the Gaudiya Sampradaya, every Vaishnava in the Sri Vaishnava Sampradaya, Ramanuja Sampradaya, every Vaishnava in the um, um, mind, but mind, but sustain. Madhvacharya, mind. So we should. One thing we have to learn is not to be judgmental. And Lord Jesus also preached this: "Judge not, that ye be not judged." If we don't judge others, guess what? We don't get judged. And who's doing the judging? Yamaraj. Yamaraj. Every time we judge someone, Yamaraj is judging us, keeping the record. And if we don't judge anyone, he doesn't. Because Yamaraj is a great devotee of the Lord, and he follows the motto of Krishna. Krishna lives by a motto. We all do. We call it our philosophy of life, right? What is Krishna's philosophy of life? As they approach me, I reciprocate accordingly. In Latin, this is called quid pro quo. <coughs> Yamaraj is also like that. And we should also be like that. If we're a follower of Krishna, why should we have a different opinion than Krishna? So if someone approaches us, we reciprocate accordingly love, with affection, with mercy, with compassion. And eventually, by hearing perfectly, by learning to focus our attention, by taking shelter of the kirtan, that's our sadhana to, to control the mind. As Srila Prabhupada wrote, the safest place in the material world is in the middle of the kirtan rasa. Not in the middle of the kirtan, in the middle of the kirtan rasa, tasting the kirtan, because you can be in the middle of the kirtan and spaced out, but you have to be in the kirtan rasa, you have to be in the mood, you have to be singing and dancing. That's how we control the mind. And then we and we become attached to Sri Sri Radha Nanda Ishwara. And our life is perfect. And then we will experience what Subhadeva Goswami was experiencing, what Pandari Vidyanidhi was experiencing, what Sanjaya was experiencing, will always be in ecstasy. Krishna explains this 
to Arjuna. Raja Vidya Raja Guyam Pavitram Ida Mutaman Pratyak Shavagamam Dharnam Susukam Kartumam Yayam Susukam. Sukam means joyful. Susukam means overjoyed, blissed out, ecstatic. Everything you do, susukam kartu. Kartu is your activities. Every activity you do, you're blissed out. When you're in Krishna consciousness. Avyayam. And that bliss is inexhaustible. There's no end to it. It doesn't come to an end. Rather, it increases more and more. That's what we want. And that's what we'll get if we follow the process. Now many, many years ago, when I was interviewing devotees for my first book, one of the devotees gave such a nice interview, it was so wonderful, that I was surprised that he had left. He had left the movement. I asked him, why did you leave? This was his answer. Learn from it. Well, Everything that I read in the book, in the Prabhupada's books, all those things that you're supposed to experience, I didn't experience them. So he left. Six years. He wanted to attain that six years. We should at least give it one lifetime. I was in a class in 1975 in Los Angeles when Prabhupada said this. You've all had millions of births, he said. And in every one of those births, you have seen everything. In all those births, he said, not everyone, sorry. In all of those births, you have seen everything. You have done everything. You have tasted everything. There is nothing new under the sun. Therefore, Prabhupada said, therefore finish up your business, and he went like this, finish up your business in the material world in this life, and go back home, back to God, in this very life, in this life. Finish up your business in this life, and go back home, back to God. Finish with the material world. Give it one life. So many years later, when I thought about that, I realized how merciful Prabhupada was because he's not even asking us to dedicate a whole life. What he really meant was from this moment on. From this moment on. Give up. All, you know, finish up your business in the material world and go back home, back to God. From this moment on, don't look back, forget the past. I know where you've come from, don't even think about it. <laughs> Finish up your business, go back home, back to God. So only half a life. So thereafter, with great difficulty, Sugadev Goswami revived his external sensory perception and began to speak to Mahari Raj Pariksit about Krishna Kata because that's all he ever spoke about was Krishna Kata. And that's why he was always in ecstasy. Thank you very much. Srila Prabhupada Kija. Are there any questions? <coughs>